Last week, a film that had been grabbing headlines for reasons that have nothing to do with the film itself finally premiered. Olivia Wilde's Don't Worry Darling is, from what I've read, a sort of feminist fever dream of a film, uh, woke in the extreme and yet of such low quality that most movie critics have actually panned it despite agreeing with and applauding its politics. Now, fortunately for the critics, Olivia Wilde is white and I think straight, and so they're allowed to criticize her work. You know, they're, allowed, they're actually allowed to do that. And so in this case, they have. Now, the movie had a relatively strong debut at the box office, helped by all of the news coverage it had gotten due to gossip and drama behind the scenes, the details of which are too tedious and boring to bother recapping here. But sales began tumbling a few days after the release as audiences realized that the film is garbage and word began to spread. Um, It's sort of unfortunate in a way, you know, Hollywood finally puts out a movie that isn't based on a comic book or some other pre-existing brand, and it sucks. So I have a feeling the industry will learn all of the wrong lessons from this outcome. But months before the film came out, uh, Wilde had explained that the villain in the movie is based on Jordan Peterson, whose excellent content, by the way, is now available on Daily Wire+. Plus. Uh, Wilde said that Peterson himself is, quote, a hero to the incel community, which she defined as, quote, disenfranchised mostly white men who believe they're entitled to sex from women, and they believe that society has now robbed them, that the idea of feminism is working against nature, and that we must put back into the correct place. She then accused Peterson of, quote, legitimizing certain aspects of their movement because he's a former professor, he's an author, he wears a suit, So they feel like this is a real philosophy that should be taken seriously. Now, almost everything that you can hear in that quote there is false and stupid. It's like a seven-layer cake of wrongness, just totally ridiculous on multiple levels. But how does Jordan Peterson himself feel about it? Well, he was asked about it um, by Piers Morgan last night while he was uh, visiting uh, Piers Morgan's show. And here's what he said. Watch. I want to ask you just quickly, uh, the film director, Olivia Wilde, has a new movie out, which she says is based on you, this insane man, this pseudo-intellectual hero to the incel community, incel being these weirdo loner men uh, who are despicable in many ways. Is that you? Are you the intellectual hero to these people? Sure. Why not? You know, um, people have been after me for a long time by because I've been speaking to disaffected young men. You know, what a terrible thing to do that is. I thought the marginalized were supposed to have a voice. It's making you emotional to talk about that. Well, God, you know. It's very difficult to understand how demoralized people are. And certainly, many young men are in that category. And you get these casual insults, these these incels. What does it mean? It's like, well, these men, they don't know how to make themselves attractive to women who are very picky and good for them. Women, like, be picky. That's, That's your gift, man. Demand high standards from your men. Fair enough. But all these men who are alienated, it's like, they're lonesome and and... And they don't know what to do, and everyone piles abuse on them. When she said that, Olivia Wilde, it, it stung you, didn't it? I saw the Oh, reaction. by that time, you know, that as far as, as criti- critiques go, that was kind of low level. I mean, once I got painted as Red Skull, you know, magical super Nazi, that was kind of the end of the insults. Now, Peterson has been trending today because of that clip with uh, thousands of leftists mocking him for becoming emotional and slightly teary-eyed. Media headlines from outlets like Variety declare, Jordan Peterson breaks down in tears when asked about Olivia Wilde calling him the hero to the incel community. Now, the headlines are, of course, meant to stir up even more mockery, and they also are meant to give the false impression that Peterson was crying over the insult from Olivia Wilde. No, obviously is not the case. He makes clear that he doesn't care what Olivia Wilde says, and why would he? Does anyone? He became emotional when speaking about disaffected, despairing young men. Those were tears of empathy, not self-pity. Okay, this was not a Taylor Lorenz type crying fit. It wasn't, it was, it was in every way the opposite. But this is an interesting thing that you might notice. The left constantly insists that men should be less stoic 
should show more emotion. And then when a man does exactly that and shows emotion, he's ruthlessly ridiculed for it. So they say that men should be vulnerable, but the moment that any man actually takes them up on it, his vulnerability is wielded against him, used against him. And if men notice that this is how it works and thus resolve to be even more closed off and reserved, they'll be accused of toxic masculinity. It's a, it's a game that men cannot win because no matter what they say or do, no matter how they react to any situation, they lose. And that is really the point, isn't it? Jordan Peterson has noticed the ways that our culture stacks the deck against young men, isolates them, disenfranchises them, alienates them. He speaks with empathy to and about this group of people, and that's the primary reason why he is hated so much by the left. People like Olivia Wilde have made it clear that young men should be lectured and nagged and uh, treated with disdain. We should make no attempt to understand them, least of all guide them and champion them. Well, we can't do that. And that's why anyone who does so, any figure who comes along and tries to give alienated young men a voice— and thus earns a large following of exactly those kinds of men, is going to get kicked off social media, deplatformed, villainized, etc. We've seen this play out countless times, not just with Jordan Peterson. I mean, can you think of an example of a, of a public figure who has uh, garnered an audience, who's known to have garnered an audience largely of men, and yet has not been labeled controversial because of it? The message is made loud and clear. You may ignore these people, or you may demonize them, but you must not treat them with respect, or advocate for them, or try to understand them. Because if you do that, you're a danger, you're a threat. You're a, a hero to the incel community. Of course, we have to keep in mind that whenever anyone on the left uses the term incel, they simply mean all men who are not avowed woke leftists. That's what an incel is. It is, at this point, nothing but an anti-male slur used against literally any man who is judged to be a political enemy. Uh, you don't need to gather on 4chan, and you certainly don't need to be an involuntary celibate to earn the title. I mean, they use that term against me, and I have a wife and six kids. If you could be an incel while driving your family in your 12-passenger van to church, then the term obviously has a much broader meaning. It's just another way, another label meant to stigmatize and alienate. And it works. Because no matter what you think, no matter what image you have of the world, no matter what your politics or your ideology demands you believe, no matter how deeply you believe in the fiction of male privilege, the fact is that a huge number of men in our culture, especially young men, are deeply lonely, lost, frustrated, isolated, I mean, I hear from these men every day. Jordan Peterson hears from them at an exponentially greater volume. That's why he gets emotional when he talks about the issue, because encountering the depths of other people's despair every day takes a toll. I mean, it's an enormous burden, an emotional burden that sociopaths on the left can't understand. I mean, they, they, they literally can't understand empathy. When they see it, they just laugh at it because they don't know what else to do with it. But it leaves us again with this stark fact, that these men exist, and denying that they exist only contributes to the problem. But it's, it's easy to see why the left doesn't want to acknowledge you know, the societal crisis of marginalized, disenfranchised young men. Because for one thing, the left has this complicated, uh, ever-changing victim pyramid to maintain. And a victim pyramid requires a villain. You know, with all those victims around, we need someone to do the victimizing. Men, especially white men, have been assigned that role. But much as comic book films don't usually spend too much time humanizing their super, their super villains for fear that they might, you know, become too sympathetic and then you're not going to root for the good guys anymore, so too does the left avoid humanizing their own chosen villains and for the same reason. That's why they treat it like a big secret. Like, no, 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 you're not, these people aren't human beings. You can't, it's, 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 no, 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 no. We, have, we, we can describe these people in one sentence, and you're not allowed to go beyond that sentence. But I think there's a deeper reason also why they would prefer to ignore this group. And that's because young men and young women 
in this culture are suffering from despair and hopelessness and purposelessness because this is what the sexual revolution and our culture's continued lurch leftward has brought. You know, if you acknowledge the men, if you take their pain seriously, then you've opened a conversation that the left doesn't want to have. Because it's a conversation about how, how all of their promises have been empty. Their revolution failed. I mean, they created despair where they promised happiness. And uh, emptiness where they promised fulfillment. That's why these men must continue to be ignored. And anyone who speaks for them, silenced. That'll do it for this portion of the show. As we move over to the members block, hope to see you there. If not, talk to you on Monday. Happy Flannel Friday. Godspeed.